Alright guys, welcome back. In the last Toadie top-down tower defense episode, we basically created a new turret, the slow-mo turret. Now in this one, we're going to make the game harder by adding a new enemy. So what we're going to do is we are going to duplicate this enemy and we're going to call this the tank enemy. Now all we have to do to upgrade this enemy is let's just double click it for stars and we're going to change the color. We're going to make it like maybe a greeny color, something like that. Make it stand out. Tanks are green, aren't they? And what we're going to do is we're actually going to move its smooth speed to one. So it's going to be a lot slower um, and you'll probably be able to catch it out quite easily. So it won't be fast and you'll be able to shoot it. Maybe we'll make it 1.25 just to make it slightly fast, but not too. And we're also going to increase its hit points to four. So this one is going to take a lot of bullets, but it's going to move a lot slower you know what? let's make it one i feel like that's fair what's going to make it worth a hundred points if you do manage to kill it because you have to you have to basically hit a lot more times, which means it should be worth more money. So this is our new tank. So what we're going to do is in our level manager under our enemy spawner script, we want to drag in our tank enemy. However, this isn't going to work yet because our enemy spawner doesn't actually know how to spawn them because when we actually spawn enemy, we just grab the first one in the array. So we now need to make this a random generate. So what we want to do is instead of this zero, we want to create an integer called um, index, which we will set to a random dot range, which we will pass in a minimum, which will be zero and a maximum, which will be our enemy prefabs dot length. We will then select our index and replace the zero with this index, which will be random between the two. Now, this is basically just going to spawn 50, 50. There's a 50% chance it will spawn a normal enemy and 50% or 50% chance it will spawn a tank enemy. But I want to make this different. So to make it so it spawns more enemies and less tanks, what we want to do is we want to basically fill a few slots with just the enemy so you can see here now we're going to have for every one tank we spawn we will have three normal enemies that will also be spawned so let's now see if this works so let's just hit play to be fair just to, to test this we probably should have removed the um removed the actual uh enemy uh, and just had some normal ones there but let's just see if we get a tank spawning so so far we are just getting our normal enemies let's put a slot oh and here is a tank you see it took two of these to take it down there but it was a lot slower i'm gonna actually remove one of these because i think this it should be about two to one for this because the tank enemy isn't super powerful but it definitely makes it a lot or makes it more difficult and more fun. Now, in a previous video, I said I was gonna make this enemies per second get harder per wave, like we did with the base enemies. So to do this, what we wanna do is actually take this and we wanna create a new, um, basically a new float down here. We're gonna call it a private float, which we're gonna call EPS. Um, and we're not gonna set this to anything. We're just gonna name uh, enemies per second. Then inside of or down here where we do the enemies per wave calculation, we're going to change this to enemies per second calculation. And this should be a capital E um, and this will work. So now what we want to do is we want to get our enemies per second, which is going to be our base enemies per second. And we are going to do the exact same maths here. So if we go to our calculator we can get our base one which is set to currently 0 0.5 which i believe is why it's still set in here yep it's still set to 0 0.5 so we can say 0 0.5 times let's say wave 5 to the power off and we are going to say 0 0.75 equals 1.6 that means there's going to be about three enemies per second at wave 5 now this may be a little bit this may start getting really difficult. So what we're going to do is we're going to map, we're going to basically clamp this value. We're going to say mathf.clamp and we are going to clamp this value between and we are going to say zero and the maximum value, which we are going to create a variable up here. So we'll say serialized field private actually this should be a float. I've I've set this to int, but this should be a float. 
and this is going to be the um, enemies per second and we're going to call it the cap and we're going to set this to about 10 enemies per second because I think once you get past 10 enemies per second you know what? let's go 15 enemies per second once you get to this will take a while to get to but once we get there we don't want it to go too much and there is an issue here and we need to convert this we actually need to move this outside of this but we don't even need it to be this doesn't even need to be rounded to an in. This doesn't have to be rounded at all. So we can actually remove uh, surrounding it. And then this can actually be changed to a float. And there you go. That is actually the what we want. So now we're going to get back enemies per second, which we will call inside of our start wave. So we're going to say EPS is equal to enemies per second. Now to check this is working, we are going to go back into Unity. We are going to... Select this to debug mode so we can see enemy EPS and we're just going to set play. Now this should be 0.5 for wave 1, although it's it's set to nothing right now. There we go, 0.5 for wave 1. However, we're not actually using EPS yet. Now to use EPS, we want to go in our update function and where we have this little code here where we say if time since last spawn is less than or equal to this function here, we want to change this to our EPS. And there you go. So now let's go back and now we should actually be able to test if this is working properly. Um, and just to make this um, a little bit quicker, we're going to just select our, well, actually going to just go in here and change the enemies per second to one for now. Um, just so it starts spawning them a little quicker straight away. We're going to go in here. Now we're going to have five seconds to actually place our turrets before they start spawning. So I'm just going to place two here. And there you go. We see EPS is set to one. And here we go. They're spawning. So there's enough one. And you can see the reds are actually overlapping from how um, fast they are. And there you go. You can currently see that it's going to be wave two now. And then there you go. We're at 1.6. So they're going to start spawning a lot quicker, which you can see is already overwhelming my enemy. So we're probably going to want a few different turrets here to help save um, the game. Basically to stop us from actually losing. Now you see we get 2.27 enemies, so this is going to start getting hectic, and you can just imagine once this starts getting really hectic, this is going to get difficult and more difficult. And you can see this is now 2.8, and this is just going to keep going up, and we're just going to basically see we actually have a playable game, which is actually pretty fun. You can see they're freezing the enemies, um, and this is basically going to get harder and harder. Obviously, we can keep adding more turrets. Um, but it's going to get to a point where it gets quite difficult to manage all these enemies coming at once. All right, guys, so that is going to be the end of this video. I hope you have learned something new and enjoyed this new video. In the next uh, tower defense video, we are probably going to be adding in turret upgrades, which is pretty exciting. It's an awesome feature. And then we need to add in the ability for us to die. And there's a few other things we can add to spruce in this. So there's actually some performance stuff we need to take care of as well to help with performance. But that's going to be it for this video so don't forget to leave a thumbs up it really helps the channel subscribe if you're new around here leave a comment if you have any questions and join the discord if you want to be a part of our community if you have any questions you can throw in there and we help people out with any question or query as long as it's to do with programming or game development so please feel free to jump in the discord but that's going to be it for this one i'll see you in the next one peace out